Hey, what's up everyone? It's Alpine Sniper and I've got Repo back again, but this time we are going to break down some talking points of where I think Team 17 can take Hell at Loose in the future and have it get back on track to what everyone loved from days past. Repo, if you want to say hello to everyone and we will get started. Hello everyone, let's get started. <laughs> so for point number one, uh, I've got some obvious things uh, fixing of the LODs. So basically if you're looking at the screen while you're playing the game and you notice that the building textures and the tree textures and everything kind of look muddy or like little pop in graphics, uh, those are the LODs. So it's basically anything that's kind of further away that all the detail is, is messed up on. Yeah, it's awful. I mean, there's windows in the game that you can't even see into you can mount an mg up on the window mm -hmm. you can shoot out nobody even knows you're there we're talking from close so we're talking from like 100 meters mm -hmm. 100, 150 meters and it's like uh you know like an mg will be posted up on a window and you know obviously i choose the sniper role pretty frequently if uh, certain uh, certain buildings i'll be you know two or 300 meters out and all I can see is a flash. Like there's a, there's a guy in the window and he's and he's taking my dudes out. I can't even you know I can shoot at the flash, but um, there's no way to see what I'm actually aiming at. Those are always fun. Or like a the, wall that's missing. It's, ex it's really bad. Yeah, you'll notice that a lot on Stalingrad, uh, where basically you you know a Russian or a German will be down towards the railroad tracks, and you can be up on the hill or further away and you think you have an easy shot and just to see your bullet impact and hit you know some random piece of debris and then going towards things that just need to be fixed in general and this is stuff that has been around forever uh fan favorites like the loadout bug and the grenade bug obviously uh what are your thoughts on those repo i still i've i guess i'm a lucky one i've never gotten the grenade bug in the entire time i've played in like 1700 hours never never <laughs> even seen it happen to me which is, uh, that's crazy to me because I, I get like yeah. I've, I, we've had this discussion before um, where I rarely get the loadout bug. It does happen, um, but I get the grenade bug, I would say, at least once a match. I get the loadout bug often. I mean, haven't played in, I don't know, probably about a month, really. Mm -hmm. um, but it was it was constant, at least, you know, two, three games a day. I'd get it right. Um, the grenade bug, like I was playing uh, as an assault grenadier and it threw all my grenades in one throw so that was pretty interesting um, <laughs> that's the only grenade bug i've ever had i i, I hear it's awful i, I can't relate I, I don't know why i've never got it let's see so next let's go ahead and talk about the mg uh the machine gun class i believe that you know as a lot of people do the mg can only really post up in very specific spots right now um they, it's hard for them to use the roofs. It's hard for them to use any uneven terrain because of the way that the bipod works. Uh, and, and it has such a short um, axle that it can pivot on and get a view of anything. And then on top of that, but like I said, if it's an if it's not like literally a parallel surface, you can't get your front sight down to even engage an enemy at a, at a decent angle. Yeah, I've noticed also sometimes like you can be on a flat surface, but if there's a grass texture, it does not like to mount. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've noticed that, but every now and then, like on the, the hedgerows where there's like a break, if you try to go prone on one of those and then mount up, it just doesn't right. want to mount sometimes. And they're trying to drop the bipod and drop the bipod and you think it's dropped and then you go to ADS and then you're, mm -hmm. you're going to that hip fire animation it's awful right right I, I think it would be cool you know i don't know how this you know could be implemented but if the mgs could get somewhat of a where if they lay down with their mg and they set up their bipod that they get maybe a two or three meter maybe maybe less than that you know something very short where it kind of clears out their view of the grass so that the grass isn't just in the, right right in their face right when they you know because every time they lay down there's a there's going to be a grass image in in front of everything that they're doing i mean that's not even really the big thing with that it's just no the, of course the it's just another thing just the way that, that gun works yeah it'd be great if they could make something like that the other thing is with the machine gun mounting is the the bunkers right like Mounting in a bunker sometimes is... It's almost... Ridiculous. Yeah, it's pretty much useless, which is kind of strange considering that's what bunkers are meant to be used for is a hard point, and you slap an MG in there, and it's supposed to be able to, you know, cut off an avenue of approach. Right, and then just if you look at somebody who's mounted with a machine gun in a bunker, they're they're sitting up so high, there's no cover. Mm -hmm. It's it's literally just a shoot me, shoot me first position anytime you mount up in a bunker. So it's a great class, but it's just... It's annoying when you're trying to mount up on flat surfaces, and it won't mount. 
or yeah. you you're it's trying a, to deploy the bipod seven times before it actually deploys it's it gets pretty frustrating yeah it's a pretty fun class especially like you know maps like omaha or you know foy Utah. where it's yeah you can set up and get some really yeah. and like cinematic moments but um when you're playing on maps that are you know a lot more urban or things like that where you really need to be able to like get down and get in a good position quickly like uh, there, it's very few times that you're going to be able to do that effectively in the way that the role works right now yeah i mean it's a fun class i just if they could fix just the mounting it'd be man it'd be so much more fun yeah let's go on next we got the medic uh i don't know if the medic needs a rework or you know I don't, i'm not deletion. sure yeah i don't or, or even a possible <laughs> deletion i don't know it's it, the way that medic is working right now it's just it's it's not it's a fun role if you're looking to kind of meme the battlefield and run around and just kind of interact with people but as far as like a necessity for squads it's it's not um you don't need a medic to to play this game or win the game you're right i mean the the major advantage you have being a medic is if you get that i think it's the pistol class with like 500 smokes that's right. good but you're really not using it for anything other than actually smoking out of field i mean you're not doing it to be a medic right i think there could be a, a use but i just don't think that in the current game state there is a use for a medic i just don't see a need for a medic like i said other than smokes unless you're just playing with your friends and you're just having a good time right you know and i get it there's people like that um there's a yeah. there's an element of role play that um the medic obviously is you know therefore but uh definitely if you're right. i mean if you're looking at just trying to win the game there's really very little use of it and i mean unless there's a medic right next to me within like five meters mm -hmm. i'm not waiting oh, of course. i'm redeploying so i can redeploy faster than i can get revived and then right i get reset on ammo uh i get reset on bandages i get and there's again I mean, yeah, there's no there's no players, negative you're gonna have an open close there's no negative yeah, you're gonna have an open close to where you were right okay so let's go next uh obviously and this is a point of contention for a lot of people in an area that i don't really partake in so i'm not going to spend a lot of time on it but i do realize uh from the outside looking in that there is a need for it uh the tank armor needs a rework uh their offensive capabilities at least per faction need reworks um you know adjustment in the armor values adjustment and reload timings between the light medium and heavy tanks all that needs to be kind of once over and relooked at because there's no reason why a jumbo or a tiger uh, should be getting destroyed in the way that they do versus you know these smaller tanks. Again, like this isn't my area of specialty, so I'm I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, I, I just think they need to be relooked at. I've heard from a lot of tankers that they like to see some slight adjustments and improvements to it. Um, I don't know exactly what they are. I don't play in armor very often if i do it's a recon tank on the opener mm -hmm. uh and pub games just to mess around you know but, right uh, but for me honestly I, I don't know enough about tanking really mm -hmm. to to know what people want like there's right. a lot of tank mains in this game that really know their armor mm -hmm. i mean and those would be the guys that i would listen to right uh and I mean, they probably can make the, the tanks a lot more fun to play. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going next into a huge contention from this last update. Everybody talked about it. Everybody's still talking about it. Speed reduction. Uh, I personally believe that the speed was amped up too far. Uh, I think a lot of people at this point would agree. Um, I don't think that it needs to go quite back to how slow it was. I think a small bump in speed uh, would be nice to see, but the the percentage that it went up in U14 was just way too much. It, it, it makes it to where y you can keep up with a tank in its highest gear. Like you can just run along or catch up to it, which is just ridiculous. You almost don't even need transport trucks anymore. So I, I'd like to see if they put a number on it, they said it was like a 15% increase. Uh, I think it was closer to 20% increase if you kind of just looked at how it translated um across the game uh, i would like to see that number go from that 15 possibly down in half uh to closer maybe like a, a seven percent increase i think they should have just left it the same yeah I, mean, the game I wouldn't be built around that thing. again i wouldn't be opposed to even just going back to where it was um the benefits did not outweigh the negatives it was fun for a day or two and then it was just like okay 
this is just way too much. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I wish that there was no, no speed increase. I mean, I wish we'd go back to what we were. The game was built around the slower speed and the slower pace and Mm -hmm. it keeps the squads together. I think it kind of forces you to work with your team and not run off, you know, and play solo. Right. Right. That's kind of been beaten to death. So we'll, we'll move on. Um, (laughs) Uh, so bolt actions, I would love to see, and this doesn't even actually just bolt actions. It's kind of like the main battle rifles for each faction. I just believe, you know, so the car 98s, the M1 Garands, uh, any large caliber, the like BAR, those guns need to be killing and one hit to the upper body, I would say out to 300 meters. Like it just, it, they, or 400. Yeah. It needs to be that way. Like you have to make a choice of whether or not you're going to cross the open because there is a lot of open ground in hell at loose where now it's like, okay, I know I'm going to survive except for a headshot. I know I'm going to pretty much survive this run across this open field, both with the speed increase and because of the reduction in the lethality. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty much good to go. I may have to bandage when I get over there. It's just insane. The BAR, I mean, how, how is the BAR like a two shot right past a hundred? It's just, it's ridiculous. And then on top of that, you've even got, you know, like the same model rifle. So like the Car 98 scoped kills in one hit, you know, for a long distance. And then you swap over to the Car 98 unscoped. And it's like, I understand that w- there's a balancing thing that they went for there. But when you're playing the game, it kind of ruins the immersion when it's like, okay, I just took the scope off and now I can't kill a dude. Right. And, and it's the same exact rifle. So next we've got server lag and stuttering. That one's also been beat to death. Everybody knows that's played hell at loose for any amount of time that certain maps are worse than others, but especially as of lately, it seems to be kind of across the board. There's server lag, there's stuttering almost in every, every match. Right. I mean, I owned a fully upgraded server for almost a year and uh, I just let it go because I don't play the game much anymore uh, at this time. But mm-hmm. I mean, we couldn't even play 49 V 49 on it because the vehicles were rubber banding so bad. Right. I mean, this this is this server was fully maxed. Yeah, if you play long enough, you'll even get dropped from a from a match. Oh yeah, there's guys that that get dropped all the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I don't have that issue, but I do know people who. Well, actually, no, I do have that issue. I mean, we've played comp games where half the half the server will get dropped for no reason. Yeah, forty people are just gone. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's happened to me, but right, I do know people who it happens to every other game. Well, if you, you know, and if you want a healthy community of especially people like yourself, you know, renting these servers for people to play on and every four or five games, everyone's going to get dropped. And then you have to worry about reseeding and repopulating your server like that's not going to lead to a healthy community. Next, we'll talk about uh, and this is this is something that I I think would be beneficial. I think it'd be beneficial generally across the board uh is locking uniforms to like maps so seasonal uniforms belong on (laughs) specific maps so obviously you don't end up with people with winter camo on utah beach and vice versa (laughs) you don't have dudes in summer uniforms in the middle of foy i understand that there's some dlc aspect to it where people purchase cosmetic items and they want to be able to use them when they want to use them but are we willing to do that at the expense of you know the game looking proper I don't use the white uniforms just because I'm not going to get caught on SMDM accidentally with a white uniform. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just not going to do it. So, I mean, that even leads to like the, you even have the co- the different cosmetics, but you don't end up using them because now I've got to constantly going to barracks or, and changing my uniform. I'm just going to pick the uniform that kind of fits into all the maps, like, you know, relatively in general right instead of constantly going in there and remembering to click my winter camo on foy and then my desert camo on you know ll main and then picking my regular camo on karen tan so it's like i'm just gonna pick an average uniform that i stick with for every map so next let's move on to the british obviously that's another point of contention that's been beat to death uh the British do need a rework. I personally believe that the P-14 should not be the main battle rifle. I think you should go ahead and make that Mark IV. Uh, that's in only some of the classes that looks very similar to an SMLE. Just go ahead and make that the main battle rifle because the P-14 was just not used. Right. Um, there's obviously the issue with the British Firefly where the tank. Uh, anybody that plays tanks mm-hmm. can can vouch for this. The Firefly is basically a broken tank right now. Yeah, it turns really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> and then obviously you've got the rest of the small little quirks of the British army that they've got in the game that obviously just need a rework. So um, that's just another broad stroke here. British need a rework. Uh, what do you think about Artie? Uh, I, I, I think Artie needs to either become a commander ability, like a Colin, like a bombing run, or there needs to be some kind of an increased cost of the artillery shells that, you know, allow a trade off between a commander and abilities and just like spamming artillery. Cause right now it's like, it's just a constant barrage. It's like, it's, you know, trenches in world war one. I. I think that maybe in pubs, we should just go to one arty gun. It'd be a lot more fun for everybody. Yeah. Um, having multiple arty up, especially with people who know how to use them. And let's be honest, the only time you're going to have three arty guns up, those three people know how to use those. Oh, of course. Um, and they're doing it just to absolutely destroy the the game. And, and my hat's off to them. I mean, if you can do that, it's great. Um, well, that's another thing I, too. Is like I feel like there should be some kind of uh, like a, um, a random deviation to the shell so that you can't use a calculator to literally pinpoint an exact spot on the map. There is deviation. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is. I think it's like ten or fifteen meters. Yeah, it's that's whatever um, it is. It's it's not enough. Because the the blast but, the blast radius is I mean it still wipes everything out in that area. The one thing I do hate though is when Artie is live, uh, the Artie recon meta is just awful. Yeah, it's atrocious. Yeah, I, it, that, that's I hate another. that loop. Well, and that's uh, that's why I think it, honestly, at the end of the day, and the easiest thing to do is just literally get rid of the Artie for players to be able to take control of. Just let the commander call it in for a period of time, 10, 15 seconds, like a barrage. There is a lot of negatives to the RD meta like in, in all right. facets it, it affects everybody in the game i don't know exactly how you could fix it i do think mobile mortars teams would be great down the road i don't think it's coming anytime soon right um and maybe there's an RD player role like the way you pick a tank commander you have to pick an RD player to go and 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 use the RD guns yeah i mean that'd be good because that way you wouldn't get support players and assault players on RD right who don't have comms with the entire team and that's how you get team killed right uh moving on take a look at uh, flares i think that the flares and uh, anybody will agree with this they're pretty spammable uh it's just like with hey. rockets uh redeploy get more flares shoot them and it's a, a you know if you get a very dedicated player that's a spotter and he constantly shoots his flare, dies, shoots his flare, you know, redeploy, die, uh, picks up a new flare. He can pretty much keep a UAV up for the commander or the entire match if, if he wanted to. Um, so there's right. there's got to be a cooldown of some sort for, you know, to, to mitigate that because it's it's not, it's just not, a, it's a broken feature. I, I think I went back through one of my comp games in between me and the other spotter, Romulus. I think we shot... Oh man, it was over a hundred flares on Hill 400. Yeah, just consistently, just spawn, shoot, flare, die, spawn, shoot, flare, die, escape, redeploy, shoot, flare here for defensive purposes. Hey, there's an airhead coming down over here. Spawn on the nearest garrison, and then we're both spamming flares. So right, we know exactly where it's at. All right, and then so I do think that this was a good point. Um, garrisons i believe should be able to be placed within somewhere around 150 meters rather than the 200 it was increased because every 200 meters like the maps are big but for every 200 like to make it 200 meters you pretty much know once you find a garrison where to look for an enemy's next garrison because of there's only so many decent places to hide a garrison on a lot of these maps um, especially if you've oh, yeah. played for any point in time or if you've played any type of a competitive scene you know where a good garrison should be placed otherwise it's just going to be out in the middle of a field somewhere which you know the enemy you know either you know whoever put that there already doomed their team to begin with yeah i have no experience with 150 meter garrisons uh 200 meter garrisons it's so easy to find your garrisons i mean if you have them um, I can pretty much tell if I start hitting the back lines whether or not your team has garrisons because right. it, it, there are certain spots that you can put them, mm -hmm. and uh, if they're not there, you don't have them. Exactly. Um, but yeah, 150 meter garrisons. I think it'd be it'd be interesting. Uh, I never played, you know, with 150 meter garrisons at all. Um, heard about it, and I do think that it would have it would change the the gameplay a lot. I think 
And yeah. I think it'd be a, a good change. On certain maps, there's literally very specific spots that if you don't place a garrison at this particular spot on a map, you're not going to be able to either defend or have an offense. And with it being 200 meters, you can not you can only place it in so many places on a lot of these uh, more open maps without you screwing over your entire team. But yeah, I, I'd be down for 150 meters. Uh, I, I Yeah, I'd love to try it. Yeah. And, and it's it's a super thing, simple thing to change back. Like if, if people decide they don't like it, I think, it again, it should just basically where we're at in the timeline of Hell at Loose try it again and see if it was something that should stay or go back. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it wasn't even something that kind of, that even crossed my mind. Now that you bring that up, I do think that it could change the gameplay um, in a positive way. What are your thoughts on adding a asymmetrical balance to commanders? So like, for instance, we've already got a similar instance of this with the, Russian commander where he's able to call in Katusha strikes a lot faster than the German commander can call in a bombing run. Do you think there should be more things like that that are more kind of dynamic and faction specific uh, to kind of vary, you know, the commander role from side to side so that you're not always kind of just doing the same thing, just changing your uniform? I, I don't know. I don't know what that would do to the game. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about it in a comp aspect and, and I don't, I don't think it would be good. Right. Um, but in, in a public, you know, setting, it might be, it might be great. It might be a lot more fun and engaging. Mm -hmm. Could be, like yeah, I said, it could cool. just be something cool to like kind of toss around and see what the public thinks. Uh, one thing that I do think should happen is how you've in offensive mode if you're on the last point or not the last point per se but like as the clock is ticking down and the match is about to end if you are able to kind of start capturing the point but the clock is going to run out before you're finished capturing it goes into overtime and i do think that that is a really nice mechanic to have um, and then you go over and you go to warfare and when you go to warfare, that is not a thing. Whoever is in control of the point when that clock goes down, whether or not they're about to lose it, even if they had an extra 10 seconds, um, that's the end of the game. Where So I, I think that would be a cool thing to just spring over from offensive to warfare is allow that small bit of overtime if uh, the team that is holding the objective has started to lose it when time runs out. I do think it needs to be something the server owner can choose sure. whether or not to have. And that's fair. Um, I think it would be a lot of fun, though. I think you'd see a lot of people. I think you'd see a lot of crazy strategies. Well, if, and well, because and that's the thing, right? Because like when the game, you know, everybody's like, oh, there's a minute and 20 seconds left. We have no chance of capping. So they just start shooting their guns in the air and stop playing the game for the next, you know, minute. Right. So like if you know that if you start capping the, the point before it gets to zero, you at least have a chance to still take it and win the game. But as of right now, you're just like, ah. I don't even have enough time to cap it because we're going to run out of time. Even if it's, you know, by one second, you know, you're, everybody just stops playing the game. It does kind of kill the, the action at mm -hmm. the end of the game. hundred um, percent. You see, you see entire do, teams. Just I think give it'd be up. fun. Yeah. I think it'd be fun. Um, but I definitely think that's something the server owner should yeah. be able to control. I'd be, I'd be perfectly fine with having that, making uh, a server option just need more things to control for server owners to make the game better. Yeah. Um, and that yeah. this kind of bleeds over to my next topic, which is uh, offensive mode used to have a cap time of two minutes and it was changed to a cap time of one minute. People are scrambling on both sides to either stop the cap or continue to cap. And by making it one minute, it's very quickly like it, uh, a point can change hands very quickly. Like one minute is not a lot of time, but whereas like two minutes, like a team that capped the point deserved to cap it because two point, you know, two minutes is a decent amount of time to take to cap a point. Whereas like one minute, you know, you can, you can put down a good airhead and there goes the point. And especially on a map or on a, a game mode, like offensive where each point, once you've taken it as offense, the defense can't grab it back. So, 
you can end up with a steamroll very quickly if the defense hasn't had time to like, you know, even if it's a two minute timer and they're like, okay, we're definitely not getting that back. Um, the two minutes is still a nice buffer for them to start bracing at the next point. You don't always see commanders or squad leaders setting up back garrisons, you know, so that there doesn't become that just wave of captures by the offense. Um, I think it would be good uh, to have garrison like a pre deployed garrison. That's, you know, um, a default garrison like you get on some maps like Omaha, but you have like one default garrison in every sector so that the where the defense is made to fall back to the next point, there's always going to be a garrison that allows the defense to at least be at the next point. Yeah, I think that's that's fair. Um because you know as soon as an offense like let's say you you come up you have a very imbalanced offense or at least a hot hand offense at the beginning and they're able to take that first point very quickly there's no way that a defensive commander is going to have time to set up enough garrisons to slow the steamroll um whereas like if there's a default gary at each uh sector falling back then he's going to know that he at least has something to work from yeah i mean i i think it's a good idea i think it's a really good idea i mean yeah, I think it'd be a lot more fun. I'd probably play a little mm -hmm. more. I agree. Like, because, you know, you don't always have to rely on a commander uh, in that game mode. Whereas, like, you know, obviously in warfare, garrisons and and uh, uh, outposts are everything. But in offensive, you literally can, the game can be over in 15, 20 minutes because they've just steamrolled and the commander hasn't had a chance to even do anything. So, you know, moving on to the next thing, uh, and this is something you've alluded to in uh I, Archon, the essentially the options and the settings that server owners can toggle in game and and kind of tweak. It's pretty bare bones. Uh, it'd be really nice to see a lot more options in there, uh, even just like some of the things that we were talking about earlier. Um, but as a server owner, what kind of options would you want to see? Because right now, I don't think that you server owners have what you need to make the game as good as it could be. Yeah, I mean, you don't have any control other than map rotation at this point, to be honest. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things that the devs need to unlock and let us, you know, have control over. But being able to customize the rules of the game for whatever you're doing. Say, for instance, you know, you want it to be infantry only. Right. Okay. So there's no there's no armor anymore. There's no artillery. Yep. Just make everything toggleable, especially, I mean, they're custom servers already, right? Like you guys are paying the money. You guys should be able to go through there and literally change, you know, because it's everybody's option. Like if I don't like the rules that you put on your server, I'm not going to play in it. You'd have almost an entire mini subset of game types within Hell at Loose just by allowing the Archon uh, server owners to go in there and, like you said, turn off tanks, turn off artillery. It would be a lot more dynamic, like, oh, I'm going to join a new server. I wonder what these rules are going to be like, you know? Whereas, like, now, right. you know, I hop into a server, I know exactly what I'm going to get, no matter what. There's a lot of different things they could do, but you just don't have any control over anything other than... Maps and, and kicking people. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's... I mean that's about that's as bare, that's about as bare bones as you can possibly get in a game like this. Think about the community events that people throw. Right. You know, I mean, if you want to do an armor only match, exactly, it would it would just bring a whole another level to this game. I think. Yeah, I mean, but we won't get it if we don't ask, right? Just I mean, hope they listen. Right. Please, 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 please yeah. help us. Help us help you, right? Yeah. <laughs> we'll make we'll 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 bring people back. <laughs> Mikel is great again. Let's see. So uh, another hot topic that it's kind of fallen on deaf ears for a long time was these bridge maps. I don't understand it. I don't know where the thought process is, but the bridge maps, the middle point, especially for warfare, it needs to be on, it needs to be the middle of the bridge every time. No, That's I right. mean especially in offensive. Oh yeah, I mean it's just I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like the whole map is centered around <laughs> this huge structure in the middle of the map that everybody is drawn towards. It's a huge choke point. I don't understand why you would put a starting point on one side of the river that requires the enemy team 
to only have access of one way getting across, which means it's an obvious advantage to whichever team has the middle point on their side of the water. A lot of these matches on like Remagen and stuff, all right, so you get to a stalemate like the if the uh, for instance, if the first point is on the American side and the they just stalemate the other team on the bridge, everybody knows that you're stuck on your side of the water until your commander can throw down a random airhead somewhere off in the distance on the enemy side of the uh, of the of the bridge, you know, and then you're you're basically just playing pot shot with each other until that can happen. And if you have a commander yeah. that won't throw down an airhead, you're not getting across the bridge and you're basically just fighting for nothing, you know, for an hour and 20 minutes. There's there's more issues with Ramaga, I think. Of course. But to keep, keep it to your topic, I, I do think that on Ramaga, especially, I think it needs to be center, like the bridge only. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, if you're going to make me fight on a bridge map, make me fight over the bridge. I agree. I, Drill, I haven't played it enough. Um, Drill has really a to... Drill has a lot of options to go across. Um, they, some of them suck more than others, but it can be done. Um, but still, right. like I just, I mean, even if even even on Drill, like there's multiple ways across the water. But if you make the center point the center of the bridge, those other ways across aren't negated. There's still other ways to get across and then flank and then come up on the rear of the bridge. There's a lot of other maps in the game that don't have a main structure like a bridge. So if, if we're going to play on the bridge map, I want to fight at the bridge. Let's see. So this next topic, I think, is just something that I think would help with the devs communicating with an obviously very passionate community. If we're going to make decisions based off of an ahistorical aspect and more in favor of something for gameplay or vice versa, like just when there's major decisions made, I feel like it would be nice for the devs to just explain why. Um, so if you're going to give the British uh, a certain gun and not another one, even though, you know, uh, historically it wouldn't make sense for that to be there, at least just give us like an explanation other than to just slap us with it and be like, here you go. This is your game and just play it or don't. Yeah. Um, you have some things that they're like asked to be like this historically accurate like the maps for instance the mm -hmm. maps have been fantastic for historical accuracy if you actually look at it from you know a real map like a topographical top down right but then nothing else about you know anything else in the game is accurate but then they want to talk about historical accuracy and it's like well, it's one or the other and I, I don't think that's just team 17 i think that goes all the way back to black matter as well yeah but at the same time too they're trying to balance the game so i do understand that you can't have super historically accurate and game balance. No, I agree. I would rather lean towards like historical maps being or like the maps being accurate and then just balancing the factions a little bit better. Well, like for instance, like, I mean, obviously the Garand is a better rifle than the car 98, but make my car 98 accurate and allow me to shoot and, you know, make one hit kills. But at the same time on the, on the flip side, the Germans obviously had a better MG. Like the, I would rather have an MG 42 with its rate of fire than the, the, than the Browning uh, machine gun. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah, like if we fight Russia nowadays, like we are going to have, you know, you know what I mean? We're, we're going to have American based rifles. They're going to have Russian based rifles. There's no need to like make everything so vanilla and all that changes is the skin of the weapon. I, I just want a game that's playable and fun and smooth I agree. at the end of the day, Yeah, you know, and, and, and halfway balanced. Like if I ever get rolled over to the British on drill or El Alamein, it's an instant disconnect. <laughs> I, I just won't do it. Yeah. I won't do it. Cause you know, I mean, you're going to, you know, you're going to be in a bad mood yeah. by the end of it. Part of yeah. that is it's not even worth playing the British really on any of those open maps like that. Cause you're just going to get outclassed by the German weapons that actually work. You can't be historically accurate and then use worse weapons than what the British actually had. Right. Goes back to our earlier point. The British just really need a rework. I mean, they can literally just go back, right, and make sure that the rifles are zeroed properly and then just literally move some of the, the weapons. I mean, I do think that the rate of fire for some of these British rifles needs to be absolutely increased like it's they're far too slow for what they are um, and the, right. the, the training that they received back then. Um, but if you sit there and you rework some of their classes, like it's just moving one gun out and moving the other gun over, like it, it's not hard to do. You could literally make the British better in a hotfix. Yeah, I think one thing that would make them a lot better is put a bipod or make a, a usable bipod on the Bren. Oh, yeah. Well, you I know. mean, 
My that, goodness, that gun is so bad that, without a bipod. That's just like, there's some obvious things uh, that I just don't understand. Like the, yeah. the fact that you've got a Bryn, you've got a bipod, and you, you can see it on your screen and <laughs> cannot use it. Of course you can see the Bren on your screen. It's your entire fucking screen. Right. Well, I mean, there's so many there's so many negatives <laughs> to using that gun. You'd think it's it would so be... Oh, bad. Yeah, there's so many negatives to using that gun already. The fact that you can't even use one of its only perks. It just, like, it's right. mind-blowing. But let's see. So on our final point here that I've got written down, uh, I've got... This is kind of just an opinionated one. What do you think about a idea for the commanders to have more of a real-time strategy ability kind of added in to, you know, something along the lines of, um, kind of like, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for here? Kind of like, uh, uh, a tech tree. So like, for instance, I'm a German commander. Uh, I know I've got some really good tankers. Uh, maybe there's a, uh, an aspect that I can devote some of my supplies to, you know, m maybe, even a, a, you know, make it a decent chunk, but maybe I can give a small benefit or a bonus to the tanks that I spawn in for my really good tank crews. Like I know my infantry is lacking. Maybe I got squads that aren't sticking together or they're losing all the gunfights, but I know my tank squads are killing it out there. Maybe I can give them a small bonus to kind of like help them even it out you know, even the tide of the front line a little bit, or maybe I can give a small buff to spawn timers for a certain period of time to where it doesn't take as long to spawn on a garrison, you know, cut it down by like 10 seconds or so. What do, what do you think about stuff like that? Like just kind of add like a little bit more of a strategy element to commanders if they've got the resources available. Uh, I'm, I'd be open to it. I'd be open to see what it's all about. I mean, that's a lot of there's a lot of balancing there. It's a lot. There's a lot of balancing there. Lot. And that's and that's obviously very, very far ahead of where we're at now where we just need a base game that works. But um I think right. I think it'd be nice to give the commanders something. It's not just so vanilla for you know, like I said, it, for the commanders it seems like a lot of the time it's very much just I changed my uniform, but I'm calling in the same crap. Yeah. I mean it'd be interesting to see how that could be implemented, I think. I'd be interested in that. Yeah. Um if they came up with something really cool and made it work and it was fun, mm -hmm. I think you would have more people commanding. Yeah. Um, you, you need a commander that knows the game. Mm -hmm. And I think if they, the commanders that would play and would like that RTS stuff, they would probably take it very seriously. And I think it would be very rewarding to play commander. If you, if that was something that came to the game. Right. The devs could even potentially go look at other RTS games. I mean, there's other top down, world war two games that are out there they could you know they could look through there and see what kind of uh abilities that are there that could possibly translate over to hell at loose and still make historical sense you know no i think that'd be i think it'd be a, it's a very interesting subject i think it'd be cool if they would at least uh explore that yeah you know option i feel like it would open um, up a lot of conversation about the commander role because right now it's very obvious like call in the call in tanks you know when your tankers need them call in your bombing runs drop garrisons if you're if you're not doing anything else you know, like you need to be back you know building garrisons and things like that and, and then your main job right yeah. and then that's basically it like and then you either you win the game you get some of the praise if you lose everybody hates you um and that's basically the commander role in a nutshell that'd be it'd be cool to see it'd be cool to see if if they would consider that and come up with something yeah I'd, I'd love to see it all right so that's it for my talking points if you've made it this far in the video i appreciate you sticking around leave a comment below if you've got any other ideas or things that you'd like to see implemented in the future anyways uh that's it for me uh i'll catch you guys all out on the battlefield and until then uh and hopefully with some updates from team 17 very soon about what they plan on doing I will see you guys. Hopefully. Yeah, right. I'll see you guys later and uh, stay frosty. See ya.